I am deliriously happy that I have got my first graphic novel out. Um, it's taken, it added about five years onto my life. I swear, guys, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Editing literature is my least favourite job in the entire world. Every time I look at another page, I see a mistake. And I, there just seems to be this endless um, appearance of rogue commas or um, a, a capital. And I thought, why did I miss that the first 50 times I looked at it? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely crazy. I mean, there's there's a lot to be said for doing your your edit and then putting it away and then going back to it like a month later. But I've been doing that for two years, guys, and or three even. And if I carry on doing that, nothing is going to get published. So I just thought, do you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. So the, it's a paperback. It's a paperback collection. Um, and I've called them Immersion Graphics with an X, just to be a bit more noticeable, I guess. And it's smaller and it looks cool. There's nothing cooler than an X, is there? It looks great, um, you know, in the title. So Immersion Graphics are the paperback series for the Immersion books okay so we've now now well actually I say that there are going to be other paperbacks for individual chapters but the, this is the graphics collection and and this is all my drawings guys and there are 17 artworks in issue one and I thought well that's quite cool isn't it they're about 70 70 pages so um you can judge by that you know where the pictures come they're quite it's quite heavy on on illustrative um items I could do more for the next one. I could do more because I've, I'm adopting a rather more comic, a graphic novel style of drawing, which, of course, is very, very quick. It's it's kind of casual and you kind of flip your pen around the iPad, you know. It's kind of streaky and interesting. So I, I think I may manage to actually, over time, increase the pictures and decrease the writing. Um, if If that... You know, if that looks better, I'll see. I'll see. I mean, perhaps I could do one episode with a bit more writing instead of sort of four or five pages. I could make the chapters a bit bigger and then just, you know, have sort of 10, 20 images. So it, it's got that re even more graphic appeal. I, I didn't do those, you know, that classic sort of thing where you have a speech bubble. I didn't want to do that. I didn't think it worked with my style. Now, I, I was traumatised doing this. The last three days I've spent on it. Absolute bloody murder, honestly. Actually, three years. I say three days. I mean, it's been three days trying to get it to fit into the format that Amazon do. So I've done it eight, eight and a half inch square, which I really, really like. So that's the coffee table variety variation. So that's the graphics variety. Um, there will be others and they'll be cheaper. This one's about $20. I don't think that's much. And I did look up the average price of a graphic novel and they do come in at around 20 but they go up to, you know, 50 or whatever. So I'm kind of hoping that eventually when I've made, made a name for them, the immersion graphics, that I'll be able to charge a bit more and I'll be able to feed myself. I mean, that that's the plan. I'm not expecting that for two years. You know, doing something like this is a long, slow job. I've already been on it three years. I'm expecting to turn a profit in another two years, a small profit. And I don't expect to make my fortune for about 20 years. This is how it works in life. You, but I'm, I've got my eye on the goal. My, and my eye on the goal is, is to have people, kids from 13 up, I've decided on that 13 up, I think, is about... I, I look back to when I was 13 and I remember it was just before, you know, I started my periods, um, but I was interested in boys. Um, I was questioning my parents. Um, and in, in a way, because this if you think that this is about the machine and the ownership of the machine, you can, in my mind, you can sort of... Put, align that with parent parents. <laughs> it's 
you know, the parents, your parents and society is a machine. So although this is actually AI that I'm that I'm talking about, it's it's the um, something is revolting against something else. And I I think when we're 13, we start to become little mini revolutionaries. We start to think about things. But the other thing is that's really interesting is that so few people have books now. So few children have books. And, you know, adults uh, are becoming... Everything's sort of online, online. And, of course, my books are online as well. But I want to... I want to allow people to to feel the texture of, of the paper... And to just keep looking, keep looking at the pictures over and over again, you know, and read the story over over and over again. But the the writing is minimal, so I think I, th- I, I no, I can't remember. I did do a word count, but I've completely forgotten what it was. I said it's only about five thousand. I think it's, it's not very many. May may, may even be three thousand. So you, you know, it's not word heavy at all, but it's picture heavy. Now this is issue one, so there will I'm going to update them as well. And there'll be you know second edition. When I say issue one, what I mean is edition one of the of book one. So there, yeah, the, indeed there will be other um, publications of the same story. Perhaps I'll add some pictures. Um, things change, do they not? Somebody might find a picture offensive, and I might have to remove it. You don't know. You just don't know. But this is issue one. It's gone out and it's thrilling. Now, it, it's interesting because last night I was in a lot of pain. I had a terrible three days of the stress of it, just trying to get the bleed right, you know, all these things. But this morning, after I'd got over the initial um, drama of what a hideous weekend I'd had, and I'd had my second coffee. I just had to, guys, I'm going to get three. I'm going to get, I'm not right till I've had three. So I'm going to do that. Then I'll be doing a poem on my TikTok. So do pop along to that. Um, what am I on TikTok? I, I serve a land, I think, on TikTok. Um, but it'll be all over the blogs anyway. So I, I suddenly realised that actually the gratification far outweighed the agony no gain without pain, guys. We know this. Artists know this. Gym freaks know it. <laughs> Which reminds me, I haven't done a plank or a lunge for about a week because I've been so busy, so I'm going to do a bit now. Um, just, you know, you can do some lunges, guys, while the, while the kettle's on, you know. It's a really good way of doing it. You can, you can do about 60 um, squats. That's when I get tired. I have to stop at 60. I could do more because the the kettle's not ready yet. Anyway, I'm waffling on a load of detritus, verbal detritus as per. The sense of gratification that I felt after my second coffee that I'd produced this beautiful product, which even if I'm the only person that ever thinks that, is still beautiful to me. Really proud of it. Really proud of the art. Um, no doubt in a year I'll look back and I'll think, oh God, you know, what was I thinking? But for the moment, the elation is so good that I'm going, I want to do the next one. <laughs> now I'm not going to do those, I'm going to do one a month, but the next graphic novel is Rat, The Rat Gang Crew and I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this week. A little bit each night. What I'm not going to do, guys, I'm not going to do... Um, an e version of it. I'm and I'm not going to do more than sort of two hours a night. And I think this is the secret. Just you know, I mean, obviously you've got to write the story. I do. The, I like to write in the mornings. I'm really alert in the mornings. I like to draw at night because it it takes me to another zone and it helps me chill, helps me relax. Um, you know, on my iPad, the, these are my digital illustrations that I do. I'm using Procreate. I find it very very relaxing actually. So a couple of hours that you don't need any more, literally a couple of hours and you've got your book within a, a week or so. So that's I've already got a lot of rat illustrations that I've done. So the introduction to the Rat Gang crew is how how they happened. How did they get here? Where where from where do they hail? And again, sort of 13 upwards, I, I seem to be enjoying this way of writing. And I think it's probably because 
people of a certain age like imagery. They really enjoy it. And because I'm a, I'm a contemporary artist and I use contemporary imaging, and I think that's, you know, I mean, I, I might find that loads of 40-year-olds start buying the Rat Gang crew. I actually don't know. But my target audience is 13 to 20, that sort of age group. Um, and, of course, myself. Um, and I, I kind of um, imagine, I hope that boys will like it. M not more than girls, but boys are, are much harder to engage. You know, they like um, different things. They like, I mean, you remember that I started this as an, uh, a, a game book, a, a, you know, where you made decisions at the end of the chapters that took you to different places in the book before I realised it was too difficult for me to do that because I was doing it online. But I, I sort of really, in in reference to my own son, who who I found communication very difficult with, um, and but he loved games. Uh, and I, I suppose I was think, kind of thinking about that and how I would really like to communicate. And now I have grandsons and I'm really looking forward to reading them the books and um you know I mean I've got one who one grandson who's nine and I think he's going to love it and you, the the beginning chapters are quite adult uh sorry the beginning intros but you can just leave those out you do, and, and then you can read the rest and show the pictures and and I I guess I'm thinking about that uh, as I write them and as I do these images I'm thinking about how I could engage and communicate with the boys in my life that, um, you know, I've never been very good at communicating with. I blame my same-sex... Oh, no, I didn't go... Yes, I did go to a same-sex school. <laughs> I, went, I went to a few different schools. But and during my formative years, my 14 to 16, I was at a same-sex school. And uh, it's really bad for you, really, really bad for you to, do, to, to suffer that um, indignant scholastic regime when your hormones are rampant. I don't agree with same-sex schools at all. Yes, they do keep you away from boys, but they also really hinder you for the rest of your life. And we can see this in boys who went to all-boys all schools. They they can't communicate with women. I've seen it time and time again. And, and for me, I had that same... I mean, I could not speak if a boy came into the room after I left my all-girls school. I could not speak. And I, in a way, I haven't really... You know, I had to I had to start drinking as soon as I could so that I could overcome it. And, of course, when you're sexually um, uh, vibrant and, um, you know, your, emo your emotions are heightened through the sexuality and all of these things it's such an important part of your life from from sort of 16 right up until until 45 50 or 55 for me really of course I, I I don't have that anymore so things other things matter now but and what matters is communicating with my grandkids I, it's really important to me actually and I I do it with the girls with um with art they love art um, and they're all very different personalities. I mean, I've got quite a few. So there are there are different ways of communicating with each one. And I, and I think that the writing of uh, something like Rat Gang Crew is really about the fun of, you know, my grandsons. Having said that, I, you know, I do hope that, uh, you know, it's it's not gender biased in any way at all. I'm sure it's not. It's just this is how I'm a, I'm sort of thinking when I write something or when I draw something, I'm thinking about which one of my grandchildren would really like this particular thing that I'm doing at that time. And it's such an exciting motivation. It really is. Um, so, yeah, Rat Gang Crew, that's going to come out. So if you want to see some of the Rat Gang art, you can go along to DeviantArt. I'm on there. We, uh, I think Telltale Club on there. But I'm also going to put them all on the blog now as well because I've got some great ones, really, really lovely um, Rat Gang Crew images. So you'll be able to pop, pop over there, estelamerda.blogspot.com, um, iserverland.com, telltaleclub.com and um, Art by Sarnia. 
Ooh, I'm feeling really productive. I'm, I'm on a bit of a high. I'm going to have coffee now and I'm going to be even more high. So have a great day, guys.